Welcome back. And as you know, I'm Eli, the computer guy here for the Daily Blob, where we say, ha 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 ha, we now have an LLM with one trillion parameters. Wah ah ah ah. That, 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 that is good, right? Like a trillion parameters is better than a billion. Or is a billion parameters better than a trillion? Or maybe you want a million parameters? Or maybe you want like a peta, a peta alien parameters? Hey, can we, can we get that guy from Gamers Nexus, that guy with the big hair, can we get him to create some spreadsheets for this channel so I can put them on the screen so we know what the hell we're talking about? Anyways. <laughs> I, f I find this curious and interesting, more in regards to the whole America man versus China man war that's going on in the AI space. I'm really not sure what a lot of these stats actually mean at the d end of the day. I'll, I'll admit it. It's kind of like graphics cards, like with Gamers Nexus. You watch these Gamers Nexus videos, man, they just have screen after screen after screen of just charts. It's like, what, what does any of this mean, <laughs> right? You, you, fi you find the software that you want to run, you figure out what the requirements are and the other requirements, and then you buy that particular product, right? I think one of the interesting things with the AI world right now, especially with the LLMs, is there's so many LLMs out there that I do think it's becoming a real question about what do any of these stats uh, actually mean anymore? Again, as, a, as an actual technology professional, one of the things that I would argue is the whole thing of, you know, what hardware resources uh, do you have uh, to run things like your LLMs? You know, what, what, how much money do you have to run your LLMs, right? So uh, 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 Microsoft Pi, P-H-I, uh, their model will run on a Raspberry Pi. So if all you've got is a Raspberry Pi, you can download Olama, you can run the, the Pi model, uh, and it will give you the, the LLM outputs, and then you gotta figure out how to make those things actually useful, right? On the other hand, if you just have tons and tons and tons of money, then you can go and you can make an API call to, uh, to OpenAI and just uh, keep running your credit card uh, to get the, uh, the, the results back. I think it's really important nowadays, especially in this whole 2025 world, to really, to not be so hyper-focused on um, the charts and all that kind of stuff with the LLMs and who is technically better than the other company and really start, really start dialing in what are the results that you actually need, what, uh, what, like how, how reliable do you need those results to be, how safe or whatever do you need those results to be, what, what's the price to performance you need those results to come back as, uh, and then focus on that type of thing is what I would argue. But I do find this interesting, the whole one trillion parameters thing uh, coming from uh, China, uh, coming from the Quinn model, uh, just simply because right now we're told in the United States uh, that we have to win the AI arms race, right? We, we've heard it from the Biden administration, we've heard it from the Trump administration, America must win the AI race. And all I'm arguing is that <laughs> even if we're winning, <laughs> Even if we're winning, I don't. I don't feel like it's a solid win, right? And so, uh, so yeah, China. China is coming out and doing the kind of things that China does, basically, to to make us look like uh, dummies, dummies. And that's where we have this one trillion parameter model. Uh, so Quinn Three Max arrives in preview with one trillion parameters, blazing fast response speed, and API availability. Uh, this comes from Venture Beat. Um, Chinese e-commerce giant Alibaba's uh, Quinn team of AI researchers has done it again. After a busy summer in which the AI lab released a whole fleet of new open, AI, uh, open source AI models with support for English and Chinese, models that matched or outperformed top US lab offerings from Google, OpenAI, OpenAI and Anthropic, it has now revealed its largest uh, large language model uh, to date, Quinn 3 Max Preview with more than one one trillion uh, parameters. Now, I am curious what hardware would be required 
to run a one trillion parameter uh, LLM. Uh, so whenever you talk about this, so I talk about this with Pi. So Pi is like a 1.5 billion, 2 billion um, parameter uh, LLM. If you look at Llama, so Llama is the one that comes from uh, Meta. They have a 7 billion, a 14 billion, and a 70 billion, and like a 400 billion uh, parameter models, right? So, uh, so if you look at it, like a 7 billion parameter model, um, so a 2 billion parameter model will run on a Raspberry Pi or something like a 2012 MacBook Pro. A 7 billion uh, parameter model will run on something like a 2019 uh, MacBook Pro. Uh, my M2 uh, MacBook Pro that I have here, uh, that will run a 14 billion parameter uh, model pretty well. Uh, if you're going to do a 70 billion parameter model, uh, that would generally require a good desktop computer uh, with a good GPU to run it. If you go to 400 billion parameter model, that's one of the versions that, that Llama from Meta came out with, uh, that would start to need some real GPU resources. And so it is kind of curious here when you start talking about a trillion parameter model, one of the things you have to think about is like what, what are the hardware resources that would be required to even run one of these things? My, my, before we get into latency, before we get into latency of, you know, put in a request, five minutes later get a response, before we get even that, it is kind of curious to wonder, like, what kind of a hardware would you actually need to run a one trillion parameter model? Uh, but anyways, in addition, the benchmarks released by Quinn team for Quinn 3 Max Preview shows it's it best the company's previous top performers and competes closely with other high-end models in the field. Uh, unfortunately, unlike Quinn's previous open source releases, Quinn 3 Max Preview has not yet been made available under an open source license, meaning developers will need to rely on the company's paid API or distribution partners to uh, above to access it. This is the other thing, like I am wondering with these models, at, at what point um, are the resource, the hardware resources required to run these models just so significant that open source becomes irrelevant? I've talked about this before, long before the AI world, when uh, like Amazon and Google got into the open source game. So back, back when open source like really mattered to me back before 2010, it was all for products that you could use, that you could deploy yourself, right? If you wanted to deploy a Linux server, you could buy a piece of hardware and deploy a Linux server. If you wanted to apply uh, Pigeon email services, if you wanted to apply, uh, if you want to apply um, Samba, um, uh, LDAP, Samba's LDAP. Anyways, Samba, I think it's LDAP services or whatever else. Uh, Squid uh, um, proxy services or whatever. All right, those are open source projects uh, that you could actually deploy. And so the cool part about that was is people people supported those open source projects and you were able to deploy it. It was all this really nice you know, fluffy, a fluffy world, I guess you could say. The curious thing is when the big players came in, when cloud computing really came in for infrastructure as a service, software as a service, that type of thing, is you have these big players, right? The Googles of the world, Amazons of the world, that type of thing come in. They would take those open source projects and then, and then they, they would give back. They would give back to the project, right? Whatever, whatever new developments they created, they would put that back in the project. The issue was, is they were working at such a scale that so many of their improvements just didn't matter for anybody, <laughs> right? Hey, we added this improvement so that a thousand servers can communicate in the cluster more, more effectively. Right, which is great. I mean, they're, they're, they're putting that back in, but how many people are running a thousand servers, right? And that, I think that was an interesting thing that I saw with, with so much of open source is you heard Google and Amazon, these companies are really touting their open source creds, but what they were providing to the community, it was functionally useless, right? It was real and it did work and it was solid and reliable, but it was functionally useless because almost nobody had the resources to deploy that or the need to deploy that at that kind of scale. What becomes really interesting like with these open source models is the whole idea of what happens when these open source models are provided, you can use them, but simply to use the open source model, you'll need a $20,000 piece, uh, piece of hardware, right? If you look at the, the Blackwell GPUs from uh, NVIDIA, it costs $40,000. Forty thousand uh, dollars for their enterprise uh, GPU, and so I mean, if the, the open source model is free, but the GPU, just the GPU, not the server, the GPU costs forty grand. Functionally, 
it's worthless. And so I, I will be curious to see uh, how this moves uh, going in the future. And it might be an issue for people uh, that are designing their products using open source LLMs, right? The whole idea of try, trying to add gates later. The, the, you know, you, you build a product now that can run on a Raspberry Pi, and then you slowly start upgrading that product, right? Even though it's an open source product, you start upgrading that open source product to needing more and more and more and more hardware to the point where it just makes more sense for them to do an API call. Could we spin up our own server? Yes. Eh, fuck it, we'll just use the API call. I think that is gonna be a thing just to kind of keep in mind with your projects, because I think that's what we're gonna start seeing more and more of. Uh, features and technical specs. Uh, the model supports a context window of 262,000 tokens with a maximum input of 258,000 tokens and a maximum output of 32,000 tokens. It also includes support for context caching, which helps optimize performance during extended sessions. Quinn has emphasized that this model is designed for complex reasoning, coding, handling structured data formats like JSON and creative tasks. Its capabilities also extend to general conversation and agentic behaviors, making it a multi-purpose tool for both enterprise and research use cases. Uh, for pricing, Alibaba Cloud has introduced a tiered pricing for Quinn 3 with rates varying based on the size of the input tokens. From zero to 32,000 input tokens, it's 86 cents per million tokens. Holy crap, that is, that is getting to be dirt cheap. So 1 million tokens now is 86 cents. So 100,000 tokens is 8.6 cents. 10,000 tokens is 0.86 cents. So 1,000 tokens is a tenth of 0.86 cents incredibly inexpensive. That's one of the other interesting things that I find with this whole LLM world, this whole AI thing, is how they keep driving the cost of, uh, of tokens down lower and lower and lower. Um, let's see, uh, an output token, so you do have to worry about the output to tokens, is $3.44. So output tokens are a lot more expensive, but you're probably going to need fewer output tokens. Uh, from 32,000 to 128,000 tokens is $1.43 per million tokens. Uh, from 128,000 to 252,000 tokens is $2.15 uh, per million tokens. Uh, so that'll also be the thing that you need to be thinking about with how you design whatever it is that you're designing, your system, is basically how many tokens you wanna go in. So the cost increases uh, very substantially, right? If you put in zero to 32,000 tokens for query, uh, that's, that's uh, 86 cents. Uh, if you're putting in 128,000 to 252,000, it's $2.15. So two and a half, almost three times the, the cost. Uh, so that's another thing that you need to be thinking about. When they talk about uh, like prompt engineering or, or context engineering, one of the things you do need to consider is, is how do you design those prompts in such a way uh, to be most economical, to, to get it in at the particular tier that you wanna get it at. Uh, the announcement drew swift engagement on social media. Quinn's official post introduced the model as its biggest yet and teased that scaling works and the official release will surprise you even more. Uh, ben Wan Wee, a staff research scientist at, on the Quinn team who has been vocal during the rollout, highlighted the milestone by stating that X, uh, on X that Quinn Max has successfully scaled uh, to uh, 1 trillion parameters and that development is still moving forward. He hinted at additional releases to come telling one commenter that more may arrive as soon as next week. Uh, so there we go. There we go. Proof. Proof that America. Proof that America is winning the AI war. <laughs> Anyways, it'll be it'll be curious uh, to see how all of this uh, works out today. Uh, at the end of the day, especially with uh, the rivalry currently between China uh, and the United States, um, and see basically who wins. One, who wins, and then two. I think what is more what's going to be more interesting is who's going to win the business use case 
uh, at the end of the day, all right, right, with price to performance, with actually putting out a product that people want to use, uh, the whole nine yards. I will be curious to see where that goes, because again, with this whole thing about a, a trillion parameter model, uh, which is great, I mean, nothing, nothing particularly wrong with that or anything, but I do wonder, I do, I do wonder if there's more and more focus on bigger, and there should be more focus on better. And anyways. What do you think about this? What do you think about uh, Alibaba putting out this new Quinn model uh, at an incredibly cheap price point for one trillion parameters? Do you feel like America is still winning? I don't know. Put your thoughts. Uh, put your thoughts uh, down below. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a thumbs down. Call me amazing. Call me a dumbass. Just do it like a real alpha dog down in the comment section down below. Do you remember SiliconDojo.com still exists. Uh, we're gonna ha start having in-person classes in Durham, North Carolina coming up in a bit. Uh, we are also gonna have in-person classes here in Asheville, North Carolina, and we are still doing fireside chats. We're going to have the founder of a $2 billion cybersecurity company. He's gonna come on in early October uh, to talk about uh, cybersecurity issues and that type of thing from his perspective. So if you're interested in those, go to SiliconDojo.com to uh, become a member. And with that, see y'all later.